Well, we're home folks. We are home. The time is approaching. Let me just adjust this camera. I should have done that before. The time is approaching five o'clock and uh, well, I brought a little bit of bitter home from uh, work. So I thought I'd treat myself on a Saturday to a nice pint of Harrison's Best. Mm. Cheers. So, what a lovely walk around Clumbo we've had. We're so lucky to have that National Trust Park on our doorstep. And, of course, at this time of year, all these windfalls are just left on the ground to rot. And there's lots of them. So, we pay our membership. I think we're entitled to an apple or two. And uh, we didn't make no bones about it, actually. I know I was joking around on the video, but... Everybody knew that we were doing a little bit of scrumping and everyone seemed fine with that. So what we're going to do with these apples, and we've only got kind of half a dozen or so of them. So it's not like we've starved any poor roe deer that might have eaten these later on in the day. We're going to make a pie. So I don't mess about with making my own pastry. I've done it in the past. It's too much time and effort, frankly. So in the fridge, I've got a little bit of uh, ready-made short crust rolled out into a pie dish, and I've also already rolled out a top for that. All we're gonna do now is prep up the, uh, the topping, if you like. So I'm just gonna put some heat on this small pan here. If it stays upright. And I've got about 50, 75 grams of butter, proper butter oh yes none of your low-fat spread we're proper butter here boys and girls so I've popped that in and I've also got a bit of dark brown sugar we're gonna put in with that butter a good couple of tablespoons of this beautiful dark brown sugar and maybe a little bit more for good luck and with that just a light sprinkle because I'm not a massive fan of it a light sprinkle of cinnamon and we're going to melt that down so I've got the oven set at 200 degrees science ready to receive our wonderful apples. So I'm going to peel these beauties and we're going to get them chopped up and in the pie base and then we're going to pour over the top that wonderful sugary buttery liquid. So the apples that were all being grown at Clumber Park uh, are sort of, not all of them, but some of them are heirloom varieties like Clumber Park hosts get your words out son it hosts the National Rhubarb Collection of all things so they must have a hundred different varieties of rhubarb there um, and these apples were Nottingham Pippin so they were pretty big they look like cookers to me. I did have my eyes open for any Bramley, but I couldn't see any. Fortunately though, I did find some Cox's Orange Pippin. Now the reason I wanted to show Abby really the Cox's Orange Pippins is because as a kid, I was a massive fan of the book, Danny, Champion of the World. And of course, Danny's dad introduces him to Cox's Orange Pippins because they have a tree in their back garden which grows them. And you knew the apples were ready when you gave them a little shake and you could hear the seeds rattling around inside. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't enough Cox's Orange Pippins there today for us to uh, put that to the test. I think we were a little bit late in the season for that particular variety. But these, Nottingham Pippin, 
while they were just starting to drop off the tree. There were dozens more apple varieties there though, so I think we could go back in a couple of weeks and get some more. Okay, so we've got that sorted. We've got a few apples peeled here. I don't know how many we're going to need. If I need more, I'll do more. We're just going to quarter these and then with this little paring knife or paring knife, I'm just going to core them. Right, just take the butter off the heat and continue with these apples. And then because we've got a glut of them in the back garden at the moment, we've got all these plums as well. So I think what I'll do, I think what I'll do is just cheekily add a couple of plums into the mix as well because if you got it, flaunt it baby. So I'm just going to get a big bowl out of the cupboard down here. I'm going to scoop in the plum just like that and then we're going to start on the apple. I'm just going to change my knife. I prefer this one. And I'm cutting the apple relatively coarsely. As you can see, we're chopping the quarters into about six pieces. I'm just going to ch chuck that into the bowl with the bits of plum in there. So from the fridge comes the tray. I think we've got too much mix here, but we'll give it a go. We want a pile of apple in there because it is going to cook down. Oh look at that. Get those two bits of plum in. So that looks spot on if you ask me. And then for the top I rolled the pastry out into some baking parchment and the trick is just to peel it away and then to drape it over the top like so and then pinch it onto the sides. Oh, I'll tell you what folks, we made that lovely sugary solution didn't we? And we forgot to put it on. Right and let's get this spooned on actually. So we're just going to drizzle this everywhere. So this is just basically brown sugar and butter. So there we go, nearly forgot that little bit there, but no harm, no foul. And then the top back on again, and we're just going to try and flatten it down a bit. Oh, that's beautiful. Then we're going to pinch it all into the edges. Doesn't have to be perfect, because we're going to make some holes in here anyway, because we're going to want the steam to escape, otherwise we'll just end up with well, apple sauce, essentially. And there we go. A little bit of wasted pastry, not a problem. We could make some apples if we wanted and put them on top. I might do that afterwards. So I'm going to make just about 10 or 15 holes in the pie various places to allow steam to escape and then right up at the top I'm going to cut a little circle out just like that and that will let the steam escape so we don't end up with applesauce in the pie which is not what we're after and then finally just to make sure that the edge is sealed 
we're just going to go around with a fork lovely jabbly so there she is ready to go in the oven so I'm going to pop her in at 400 degrees uh, sorry 400 Fahrenheit which is about 200 C and then we're going to turn it down to about uh, 160 170 science and just let it uh, cook for 50 minutes we'll come back when we tip the pie at the oven bless you here you go chucky poos come on you bugger there we are girls fill your boots how's that bit of apple and plum yes So here it is folks, it's been out the oven for about two hours now, I took it out to cool down because obviously it was going to, uh, it's going to fall apart if I cut it when it's hot. As you can see the apples have caramelised a little bit in there, a couple of bowls opened up to let the steam out, but I think all in all it's turned out to be a nice pie. Let's get some in a dish and warm some custard up. Right. This ain't gonna come out. This ain't gonna come out in one piece, folks. But we're gonna give it a go. Oh, the pastry's very short, as they say. Come on, then, you little beauty. Oh, yes. Just what the doctor ordered. That has held together really rather nice. Check that out. Oh, that's nice. Let's put a drizzle of custard on. Okay, let's go for it. Oh, lovely. We can hear the news starting in the background. Who wants to watch that? Not me, sir. There she is, folks. Nice bit of custard with apple pie to finish off the day. Oh, it's good as well. Winner! Mmm. Excellent. Well, there you go. Cheers, folks. Thank you very much. We shall see you on the next one. Oh, that plum's nice. Mmm.